we are starting to see according to the news the beginning of the interest rates starting to affect the economy when you look at dumb money it is at a high right now while the price action is starting to go down on the s p 500 suggesting that the smart money is pulling out and our last and pretty important indicator here of overall economy welcome back to another day in the market and as you can see it is a pretty wild one it is a pretty significant day uh, both with price action and some news we got for the overall economy so what we're going to do today is we're going to dive into some really key indicators which are telling us where the market is headed next um, these are very important indicators so uh, stick around if you do like this video and you find it valuable the easiest way you can do is hit the like button for me um, but also feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell but what are we going to look at today so we're going to look at a couple of things we're going to look at the fear and greed index uh, to see where overall market sentiment is we're going to look at uh, flow to see where uh, money is coming in and coming out of and then we're also going to take a look at a very key factor and that is uh, loan defaults uh, covers credit cards commercial and industrial as well as uh, your standard residential and there is something very significant on there that we can use to determine where the market is headed and where the overall economy is headed so uh, just right off the bat we're not really going to do any technical analysis but just wanted to show you right now that the market is up 1.19 percent on the day we are not closed out so far if you are long on the s p 500 or the triple q's or tqqq you are doing pretty well just off of today all right so uh why are we in this boat well right away you can take a look at this little headline uh notification through trading view and you can see right now it says stocks jump as weak u.s economic news bolsters the outlook for a fed pause uh, and then that was one hour ago two hours ago job vacancies fall to 28 month low signaling cooling job market and then lastly you have stocks close higher on bond yields decline so the overall sentiment that we have here clearly is that we're starting to see the effects of the interest rates um you know general powell talked um excuse me jerome powell talked about uh how there is a very much of a delay um and there's a lot of things that play into the interest rates months after it occurs i've talked about this months ago that for example unemployment is a lagging indicator and it is something that is going to come months or potentially even a year or so after uh the interest rates were starting to increase okay so we're in definitely a situation right now as far as the housing market where prices are so high they have not come down yet but yet at the same time interest rates are high so uh of course there's always deals out there there's always opportunities but overall the general market it is probably the worst time to buy right now um so and that is exactly the environment that they wanted to set up they want uh the housing market to cool down they want uh unemployment to um rise a little to be honest just to control that inflation so we're going to cover these um these some of these data points next and we're going to see what that can tell us about the market all right so this first one here dumb money smart money so this is just the overall sentiment of dumb money compared to the s p 500 so what exactly is dumb money well dumb money is uh basically retail um the non the non-big investors um, the reason why it's called dumb money is because it often chases uh, institutional money. So what happens is um, the market will go down, for example, institutions will buy that'll jack up the price of the stock and then dumb money follows. Then once dumb money is done flooding in, the smart money will uh, sell out of their positions and the dumb money will be left holding holding the bag, right? So what you want to do, and I've talked about this uh, many a times in the past, is you want to uh, be a contrarian in 
the market. Uh, so what you want to do ideally is you can see how this data has shown. You actually want to buy, uh, go long when dumb money has a poor overall sentiment um, as far as uh, investment into the market, right? So when, when dumb money is selling, you want to buy. When dumb money is buying, you want to sell. Now, you can see here if we are looking at, for example, 2008, there were high points and low points throughout uh, the dumb money coming in and coming out while the stock was rising, right? So that is actually an indication that the stock market is strong and it is recovering. Uh, we could be seeing an, a situation like that here. Um, this is updated last of July 30th of 2023. So we don't have August's um, data yet. I would venture to guess that August is going to be a little bit lower uh, because the market has gone down a little bit since then. Um, and, you know, basically dumb money just follows the price. Um, it kind of just lags behind the price, right? So we could have a situation where this comes down and then uh, comes back up. And overall in the price action, you might see just a little bit and then a newer, um, maybe a newer high, but if not closer to a newer high than it was before, the very least a higher high. Uh, so right now, uh, dumb money is at 0.82. It's a little high. Um, that is because of that huge rally uh, that plays into you know Nvidia, Apple, uh, Tesla, all those still being pretty overvalued. AMD, uh, you know, continue on and on, right? So um, it's it'll be interesting to see whether or not those stocks take a huge tumble or if they just kind of come down and take a breather, and where that is in relation to the dumb money, because that's going to show us. Uh, whether or not we're heading for another leg down or if we are just having a very healthy breather, something like this right here. So how do you tell the difference? Well, like I said, when the dumb money is down back, you know, at 0.21, for example, or 0.41, 0.24, where is the stock? Um, where is the S&P 500 as far as price? How significantly has it gone down? If it hasn't gone down too much. That means there's still probably a lot of institutions, a lot of people still uh, holding, maybe just not a lot of people buying. Um, and that'll give us pretty clear indication of what we should be looking for next. Uh, another quick one, the fear and greed index. So this is on CNN business. Uh, different websites have different fear and greed indexes. This is one of the more reliable ones. I checked this morning, it was at 49%. Now it is, or 49, I should say. Now it is exactly at 50. Um, so we are literally just neutral. And it makes sense because we've had a huge um, rally this year, but yet we're starting to see a little bit of a breather. So that reflects where people are very unsure right now, um, which is good because previously it was a little bit higher. It was in. I know it reached past the greed part. I think it was reaching extreme greed. And that is really something that you don't really want to start to go along in. So um, what we're starting to see so far, uh, according to these indicators, according to the news, is we are starting to see, according to the news, the beginning of the interest rates starting to affect the economy. When you look at dumb money, it is at a high right now while the price action is starting to go down on the S&P 500, suggesting that the smart money is pulling out. And our last and pretty important indicator here of overall economy is, let me find it. All right, so we have delinquency rates on loans. So let's just break this down a little bit here because there's a couple different ones. So uh, we have the CNI loans, which is commercial and uh, industrial loans, commercial real estate loans. So uh, those are the big, you know, apartment buildings, things like that, credit card loans, and then single family residential mortgage uh, mortgages. So you can see uh, back in 2008, we can learn about, uh, you know, sort of what happens, what domino falls first. Um, obviously, we don't necessarily need another 2008, and that's not to say that even would happen again in our lifetime. Of course, it obviously could. 
uh, but we like to see what exact exactly happened. So you can see the most correlated and it makes the most sense between the two is residential uh, single family mortgages and credit card loans. That makes a lot of sense because those two are very much tied together, right? People that own houses probably own credit cards. Um, and that is sort of the dumb money pairing together uh, versus something like commercial real estate loans and commercial and industrial loans, which is um, apartment buildings versus um, sort of like the industrial kind of uh, loans. Now, what we notice right now is the CNI loans are defaulting the most right now compared to anything else. Um, and did that happen previously? Uh, well, it was very much elevated previously. And you can see it wasn't, it's not always the case that it is elevated. Uh, you go back to previously of, you know, 1995, earlier, you had something like credit cards uh, being pretty high, you had the CNI loans high above the, um, above, or excuse me, the commercial real estate loans above the CNI loans. Uh, so what we're seeing right now is a rise in that CNI loan default. And it makes sense because essentially during COVID, there was a lot of corporate welfare. There was a lot, you know, the PPP loans, things like that. Um, a lot of grants, things to businesses just to keep them open. And now we're seeing, whereas before we were seeing a environment that was very friendly to starting new businesses, to growing businesses, um, to now we're seeing the opposite and these guys are getting caught. Um, unfortunately, some of the people that may not have planned too well or overextended their capital so this could be the beginning of a domino fall at the very least. Um, it could be a beginning indicator, a beginning factor of more to come. We can see that credit card right now, that is the one in red. Uh, we can see that it has a little bit flatlined, but then is now seen a recent increase. Um, as far as the residential single family homes, uh, there was a little bit of a spike post 2020, which makes a lot of sense because people weren't working. Um, that has declined since uh, about 2021. Let's see if I can get a date on that. July of 2020, it has declined since then, although it is beginning to flatline. So what we are seeing right now is back in previously 2010, uh, when the economy started to begin to recover, sort of plateaued as far as these delinquencies. Um, we have seen a decline all the way until about 2020, a peak in July of 2020, a little bit of a decline. And now we're actually seeming to see as if it, it kind of looks as if, as if they've sort of um, consolidated right here, right? You can kind of see how it is similar to a, a stock where it goes up, goes down. When it goes down, it consolidates, goes up. When it comes up, it consolidates as well, right? You can see it right on here. So this looks like the beginning of the interest rates finally starting to come into effect as far as how they're going to affect the economy. Um, this is good news if you are looking to uh, buy uh, real estate in your future. This is good news if you're just waiting for this nonsense to clear out so that you can start going long again on the S&P 500 and other stocks. Um, this is uh, not good news um, if you can't afford your house and are now seeing or your business and are now seeing the negative effects. Um, so that's really what we have for you. Um, I just wanted to point that out today because if you do look at the S&P 500, just brought it up for you real quick. Um, we are at the S&P 500 real quick. Uh, we are seeing a huge day today, um, and that is no surprise based off of the news we got. So um, in the short term, this looks hugely bullish. As you can see, there is a strong uptick on the candle um, above the HA market bias indicator. Um, and if we just pull up the SP500, the MACD crossed above the signal line, we have a green histogram. Um, and so all things are looking pretty good for a long right now. 
on the S&P 500. So if you want to take advantage of the volatility, pull up TQQQ and you can see that TQQQ is up 5.68%. So huge day. Um, stay safe, everyone. I tell everyone, um, I try to tell everyone in most of my videos, just a guy on YouTube giving my opinion, just like every other YouTube channel out there. So uh, trade safe, um, be safe. And until then, we'll see you next time. Thank you.